What is up, everybody? Welcome to The Stack. I'm Alex. I'm Pete. And on The Stack, we talk about a bunch of books that have come out this week. Now, I know we promised that we're going to be talking about one of your requests over on iTunes. But unfortunately, Justin is off. Oh, yes, you want to bring a point to order? Yeah, I do, I do. Uh, You know, like, um, I had reservations about doing this, and you were fucking a complete (laughs) dick to me, and we're like... Well, I don't care it right off. My goodness. I don't care what your uh, reservations are. I don't care. Uh, a fan wants us to reread it. We're going to revisit it. Um, and I was like, like, you know, kind of like upset. Because... Can I give a little bit of context here? So we've been asking people to leave us requests for original graphic novels, trade collections, etc., in the comments over on iTunes. And then we've been revisiting them. Uh, one of those, I think a really good example is somebody asked us to do the Alex Maleev, Brian Michael Bendis daredevil run, which we did talk about. And then Justin and I additionally wanted to talk about even more daredevil beyond that, give an extra bonus to the listeners. But Pete was like, no way. Absolutely. We need, it is very important. We listen to what people are telling us and do that. Go ahead, Pete. No, Just wanted so, to kind of like set so some full of shit. Well, yeah, uh, let me quick lie before Pete continues. Um, and if then, I wanted to lie, I could come up with a more creative one than that. I guess maybe, I don't know. Anyways, my point is like, I was feeling very conflicted because, you know, back in the day we uh, reviewed it and I don't know how time works. So I said to Zalbs like, oh, hey, we've already done this. It was just like a couple months ago or whatever it was. And you were like, "Uh, it was like 13 years ago, 16 (laughs) years ago, wherever it was, which I was like, that's insane. And then like a crazy person, I went through our website and went to just kept kidding older post older post older post to try to get back to it but we it's so long ago we actually don't have recordings of us talking about it on either our youtube or our website and so like uh wasted a lot of time trying to revisit the original (laughs) review uh so i just wouldn't repeat myself and uh it's been a nightmare but i worked and i worked and i finally uh read it and got ready for this review and then zalvin's like well justin's out of town and i don't want to do it without him so now i'm fucked well i just want to say first of all that was an incredible impression of me that sounded just like me so i really appreciate it that was great um but i do think what sucks is i did a lot of great shoulder work you did which is something that i do all the time you're a fucking muppet (laughs) <laughs> ah! yeah exactly you're just <laughs> i was oh, waving my, my hands for anybody yeah, in the oh, audio the people, podcast it was yeah, really sorry, good sorry people listening at home but it was <laughs> just picture a muppet that said salvin yeah there you go uh yes we had we had talked about with other books that we had kind of pushed it off on this request section just so all three of us can weigh in which makes uh you know it Lots. makes sense sure absolutely people want to hear all three thoughts that's the nice thing about it, having three of us everybody's got their own two cents and it's a little different so it's yeah enjoyable. so that doesn't mean people shouldn't still leave the requests in the itunes please do we got a couple uh t- stacked up at this point that we're going to get through no pun intended yeah, yeah, but yeah. when justin is back we will talk about spider-man rain and i'm sure it's going to be as non-contentious as possible we'll see what happens but why don't we jump into a bunch of new books because a ton of great stuff came out now, one big one to kick it off with, Immortal X-Men, number one from Marvel, written by Kieran Gillen, art by Lucas Wernick. This is Kieran Gillen picking up where Jonathan Hickman left off with the premier X-Men book. And interestingly enough, this seems to be pretty straight across the plate, a Mr. Sinister book down to little gossip items throughout there, him narrating the book, him talking about machinations on the Quiet Council, and a bunch of big things go down here. Pete, I know you're not into the X-Men world in general, but I will say, I think if you're gonna have somebody pick up from Jonathan Hickman, Kieran Gillen is the guy to do it. Lucas Wernick's art is great here. There's a killer twist at the end that really expands on a bunch of the ideas. And ultimately, I had a blast reading this book. And I think not only that, something we've talked about is we've been at best 50-50 about the ancillary material, the text pages that are in there. 
Kieran Gillen wrote great ones. I loved reading them. They did not feel repetitious of the information that I was getting, and it felt like a natural extension of everything that I've liked about Jonathan Hickman's run. Given that you haven't liked Jonathan Hickman's run, Pete, did you also not like this? Well, um, I just want to say I, I thought this was very enjoyable. It was a fun mm. uh, uh, Mr. Sinister kind of take. Uh, it was kind of fun to see his kind of deal with this whole, uh, you know, island life situation. So, um, yeah, I thought that was, you know, it just stinks that we're still doing the, you know, the the page stuff, uh, uh, you know, from leftover from Hickman. Like, let's let's move on. Um, you know, at this point, I feel like I'm losing pages. Um, my like the page count is down, but uh, I'm glad that you're having fun with it, and uh, you know, I'm happy for you. Oh, great art. <laughs> Thanks. I'm so happy for you. Next up, Shadow War Alpha number one from DC Comics yeah. by Joshua Williamson, art by Come on. Victor. <laughs> Bogdanovich. This is the kickoff of a big crossover event between a bunch of titles, I believe. And in here, big, big spoilers that we're going to get into. But Rachel Ghoul is finally dying. And as he is dying, he is going to give up the information on the Lazarus pits to the world. And just as he's about to do that, it looks like uh, Deathstroke kills him in front of everybody. This creates a fracture between. Deathstroke, who didn't actually do it. Batman, Damian Spoiler, Wayne bro. Robin. What the fuck? You're just going to casually say that. I Come already on. said big spoiler warning. All right. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I, I feel like people could gather from my spoiler That's warning cool. that I was going to talk about spoilers. That's I'm just saying. Um, but overall, this was a big kickoff and a lot of fun on a very dark side of the DC universe. What did you think about it, Pete? Yeah, I agree. This was a ton of fun. This was just kind of a uh, classic huge DC kind of event in a fun way. There's a lot of twists and turns. You get some real touching moments. You get a bat hug in the middle of all this insanity. Uh, some nice Alfred moments. God, I miss Alfred. Uh, just cool death stroke stuff. Uh, I, yeah, I was just really impressed with this. This was a fucking page turner, man. Like this was really a lot of over the top kind of great comic action. Let's move on to talk about Something is Killing the Children, number 21, from Boom Studios, written by James Stein the Fourth, art by yeah. Werther Daldaria. This is the return to the main series that kicked off at all after the House of Slaughter miniseries. Uh, here we are in a new location with a new murder caused by a new monster, uh, and we're getting a setup of a bunch of the characters that we're going to be dealing with in this arc. I think we all love the first arc of this book. We all loved House of Slaughter. What do you think of the early going here for this new story that they're telling? This is just a amazing return to form here. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're reading uh, uh, comics and you're like, oh, yeah, they're not really hitting how it's how it feels to yell fuck you to somebody. You know, that rat really capturing it. But this really nails it. You want to talk about one of the all-time top ten fuck yous. Uh, this is great. Um, yeah, I just, this is just kind of like back to something we love. You know, we kind of got this great kind of like, here's the houses and explore the different kind of like, uh, you know, different fraternity of these kind of killing troops, if you will. Uh, but this is kind of back to the main story and back to what got everybody excited and picks it uh, right back up where you want. Kind of a, a, a little bit of a different slant, uh, but it's still all the great same stuff you know and love. So just a fantastic issue. First arc was in a forest. Second arc is not. So there you go. Uh, but yes, great book, great art. Let's move on and talk about Hulk Grand Design Monster, number one from Marvel oh, by man. Jim Rugg. Now, this is like the previous Grand Design books, attempting to give a narrative to the entirety of a impossible to give a coherent narrative uh, character. In this case, the Incredible Hulk, Bruce Banner. Pete, what'd you think about this one? This is an artistic achievement in comics here. This is just like a, a amazing kind of retelling, a kind of grabbing of 
things that makes the Hulk great in, in a way that just was just so nostalgic and amazing to read. I felt like I was dipped in my childhood again in all the right ways. It was just really fun. And also the back matter where it kind of explains the different arcs, kind of breaks down the pages. I just can't say enough great stuff about the stylized art that kind of like tells this Hulk tale in bulk. I, I just loved it. I thought it was so great. I agree with you about it being an artistic achievement, just in terms of flipping through the pages and taking a look at everything. It's so much fun and it's so well laid out. And there's so many different things that Jim Rugg does here throughout the book. The thing that was interesting, your slash, mouth. hold on, weird to me about it is it almost takes the opposite tact in a certain way from X-Men Grand Design, the one that kicked off everything, where X-Men Grand Design attempted to give this coherent narrative to everything, this Hulk thing almost goes in the opposite direction. It's like, there is no way of giving this a coherent narrative, so we're going to take things like, uh, here's five years of comics on one page, and just kind of throw it on one page, take a look at it, here's what happened. The leader is dead, now he's alive, now he's dead, now he's alive, now he's dead. So, it's taking a yeah, but pithier... That's comics, though. That is comics, though. The thing that was so wild about X-Men Grand Design was this premise that this is all one story and we meant it to be one story. So I'm not saying this needs to be the same thing. It's just interesting yeah, to read. Fuck, I'm not insulting something. I'm You're talking about it from a critical perspective, beat. That's all. And I think it is interesting to look at this with a very different take on this sort of project. Uh, it doesn't work in exactly the same way, but it's also not trying for that, but still very worth picking up. Next up. Wait, since... wait, 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 wait. I can't just end it on that sour note there. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's, it's the doing... worst comic I've ever read. I loved it. Pick it up. I, I think that like, yes, it didn't do what the other one did, but artistically achieved something different that's and what I just said. You on you were you were kind of you were there was a little sour uh, notes to what you were doing. It's so. bad and I hated it, but I loved it and it's wonderful. It's uh, you should pick it up because it's really <laughs> really fun to read. Don't to listen relive. to Pete. Listen to me. Pick it up. It's really 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 interesting. Oh my god. Sensational Wonder right. Woman special number one from DC Comics, written by Paul Sevenbergen, Scott Collins, and Stephanie Phillips. Art by Paul Pelletier, Scott Collins, and Aletha Martinez. Unlike a lot of anthology books from DC Comics, this is not 10 to 15 different stories. This is just three stories over its extended page length. They are slightly longer stories exploring Wonder Woman and how she inspires people in particular. Uh, I was really impressed with this, to be honest, because when I turned to the first page and realized it's an anthology, I was like, oh, here we go. We're going to say the same go. things we always say, which is like, anthologies are a mixed oh, bag. And then somebody's yeah. like, but I like mi mixed bags. They're bags mixed with candy and different stuff. And then we say, like, this one was good and this one was good. But I didn't like this one and I didn't like this one. But here, actually giving these stories a time to breathe and stretch out was great and i would love more giant size specials like this what did you think pete i i can't agree more i was really impressed with this instead of us giving like a couple of stories that are great and a couple that are like why why is this in here uh it is just three really touching great wonder woman stories the first one got me choked up um yeah i can i can i give a quick rundown of the three stories so the first one is about a boy who likes dressing up as wonder woman and so it's exploring issues of sexuality and gender through that uh and like you said i think it's very powerful and very emotional by the end of it the second one is like a little bit more of a straight over the plate wonder woman magic wild monsters story but it's also scott collins drawing it which is awesome and the third one is freaky friday where wonder woman switches bodies with a young kid and so the young kid has to be wonder woman and wonder woman has to figure out how to go to high school all very fun um, go ahead yeah just 
But what's great about the the fun of it is you still really get to the core of who Wonder Woman is, and even though these are, it's Freaky Friday, it's still great Wonder Woman stuff. Um, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa! Why are you being so mean to Freaky Friday, a classic film series? That's what you sound like when right, anyways. you say something. <laughs> when I say something complimentary, <laughs> and then you're mean anyway. to me. Uh, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just was really impressed with the art and the storytelling. And you want to talk about just, um, you know, if you're thinking like, oh, should I pick up this book? You, you should, because unlike a lot of other, uh, you know, collected stories, these, this is hard. Or this is just really solid, great stories that do belong uh, together and should be celebrated. So. Um, if you're a Wonder Woman fan, you should definitely pick this up because it's going to get emotional for you and it's going to be worth it. Step by Bloody Step, number two from Image Comics, written by Cy Spurrier, art by Matthias Bergara. This is continuing the story of a young kid and a giant robot who is their mom <laughs> traveling across a post-apocalyptic wasteland, um, mostly told silently, or rather at least through some sort of alien language that we don't speak, so we don't know don't exactly need, what's going you don't on. Need words. So, like we talked about with the first issue, it's a lot of Cy Spurrier really writing to Matthias Bergar's art, which is stunning throughout here. Just gorgeous to look at. Pete, what'd you think? This is the future of comics, okay? Wow. No, no, no words. All <laughs> fucking art and panels. All right. Don't bog down this fucking amazing artwork with your bullshit words and what you're going to fucking say. I have a question for you though, Pete, I understand what you're saying and this is beautifully told, but if there are no words in comics, how are you going to be able to say it's worth it for the art alone? When the it's art on... will say that, but it's only the art alone it's all the art alone if there's no words in the future of comics. So what do you do? Well, what do just, you do? You just enjoy the art alone. Um, yeah, I just think that the, the, just the panels, the, the focus, the, the way that this is kind of like paced out is just, uh, it's, it's so great. It, it really helps flush out a character with action instead of just fucking mouth barfing. Uh, I just. Uh, what is that really, a reference to? <laughs> I'm just pe talking is mouth barfing. Um, oh, I just okay. think that um, <laughs> it's a great way to kind of let your artist. Do you do that at work? Do you like be like, hey, can we have a quick uh, mouth barf? Yeah. Just to get hey, do you got a couple seconds to mouth barf? <laughs> um, I, I just think it, it's it's so beautiful, and uh, I I love. Uh, just the kind of uh, the way you can tell a story when you're not uh, uh, messing up the images with words where you can just kind of see where the eye goes and, and uh, kind of let the reader uh, kind of uh, pace it a little bit more. I, I, it's just uh, it's really fantastic. And I'm sure uh, stuff like this will be uh, in museums years and years down the road as held up as achievements because this is just. Uh, taking comic book form uh, to a whole nother level, and uh, it's ha I'm happy to be here. Man, you should check out a little thing called Silent Films. Moving on to Iron Fist number two for Marvel, written by Alyssa Wong, art by Michael Egg and Sean Chen. This is continuing the story of our new Iron Fist, who gets his powers from a bunch of pieces of shards of swords that are stuck in his arms. So he has pain at the same time as he has power when he's wrestling with this. I love this issue. I love this take on Iron Fist. I think this is so great, so original, so fun. And like we, I think, talked about the last issue, it reminds me a lot of Blue Beetle, the Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle over at DC, just in terms of taking a classic comic concept, coming up with a fresh twist on it, making it fun, making it interesting, giving it uh, a very different twist in terms of ethnic background as well, uh, and just uh, expanding on there. I'm having a blast reading this book. Yeah, I agree. It's really, um, 
it's beautiful the the action the adventure it, it really feels new and exciting uh they've got such a great team writing and drawing it it's um it's definitely a blast and worth checking out uh, also you get you get to see kind of uh the old kind of iron fist you get a little luke cage you get uh you know there's just uh misty's in here there's just a lot of different uh, great stuff in this comic and they continue to be killing it. So I'm excited to see Iron Fist moving forward, what this is going to mean for the character. And uh, hopefully uh, this kind of stuff will get kind of noticed in the Marvel, put it on the old uh, TV shows. You know what I mean? That'd be great. I would love to see that. As long as they bring back Finn Jones, I'm going to be happy. Batman, oh, One Dark on, Knight. Man. Come on, man. I'll tell you what. I know I'm joking about that. Vin Jones, is, Vin Jones is a charming guy who they completely misused on the Iron Fist TV series, 100%. With a better script, with a better show, he would have been fine. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, take this new Like, for example, it... Luke Cage. The episode of Luke Cage that he was on, he was super fun. I'm just saying. Yeah. Batman One Dark Knight, book two from DC Comics by Jock. This is continuing the story that is basically 16 blocks meets the Warriors, but with Batman, as Batman tries to take a villain named EMP up to Blackgate Prison and needs to fight his way through a city where all the power has been knocked out. Loving this book, loving the layout of this book. We talked about this last uh, issue, but Jock does this great job of just reestablishing where Batman is in the city every couple of pages. Really, really well done. I'm having so much fun reading this, and Jock's art is top notch. Uh, as I always say, it's worth it for the art alone. Uh, but I only say that because <laughs> words still exist in comic books. Pete, what did you think? <laughs> uh you're you just you know take all my things all right so i yeah first off this is just a great example of letting an artist loose on uh, in a world that they've helped create and Jacques is killing it the panel spreads the just kind of the batman moments in this are are glorious you know like you think like oh batman could be in trouble here does a Batman move, and you're like, of course, why didn't I not see that coming? But just so exciting. And the, you know, spoilers, but the Batman smile you get at the end here, oh, just oh, makes me so excited. This is a great Batman book. Jock is killing it. I'm so happy that this exists, and this is just... Uh, you know, kind of classic DC Batman turned up to 11 in all the right ways. Um, man, this is intense and a, and a lot of fun. Very cool. A Righteous Thirst for Vengeance, number six from Image Comics, written by Rick Remender, art by Andre Lima Arujo. In this issue, I'll tell you about mild spoilers here, but I went into this issue being like, Man, we're six issues in, and I don't know exactly what's going How on dare with you. it. How dare you? And I'm I'm liking this, but I, I need to know what's going on with this guy, what he's running from, what the stakes are here. And then the first couple of pages, they're like, here's who you are, and here's what the stakes are. Here's here you what's go, going Alex. On here. And I was like, yeah, or just fuck the fuck Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, fuck thanks for Alex. listening to my thoughts, comic book. I appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Reminder knows what he's fucking doing, man. And, uh, yeah, you get just enough here in this to kind of keep you going in all the right ways. I mean, you want to talk about, uh, you know, one of the cutest kids imaginable, this adorable kid here uh, and this who can't talk is just uh, uh, just heartbreakingly adorable. This is continues to be this book that is weird in all the right ways. Like, there's this tension and drama in these panels um yeah this it's very interesting how little story we're getting with all these kind of like panels without words uh, i'm very excited about this trend of like less words more art that we're kind of living in and this is just a great use of it and a great use of tension and storytelling and giving the kind of reader just enough to not lose its mind and walk away, but to keep coming back for more because you're like, well, this one, I'm definitely going to find out what's going on. Uh, and you get a little bit a little bit more of the piece 
uh, of the puzzle. But uh, man, uh, I don't know what's better, the art or the writing. Probably the art, but man, the writing is great. And uh, this is just continues to be a monster of a comic. The excellent number two from Marvel, written by Peter Milligan, art by, uh, I put down Laura Allred, but I assume it's Mike Allred as well, probably. I'll go check that one. Uh, yeah. But this is continuing the rebooted X statics storyline, focusing on these two warring... Michael Allred and Laura Allred. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't Both know. the Allreds. Yes, all the Allreds. They're always together. They're adorable together. Um... Yes, but we are getting the aftermath of a big attack between these two teams, the Excellent and Ecstatics, and following the fallout there. We get a little bit of information filled in in terms of what's happened between the last time we saw this book and now. This is great. This continues to be just very fun media parody through the lens of Marvel Comics. I love this book, and I love the Allred's art in particular. Pete, what did you think? Yeah, this is just kind of tripped out in all the right ways. It's a really kind of weird but creative book. Um, uh, interesting use of barf that we kind of get in this. Uh, yeah, I, I just think it's a, a very creative. Peter Milligan's an unbelievable writer. And uh, yeah, this uh, is a, it's a solid, very creative use of these characters. And I don't want to skip up, uh, skip the most important part of the book. We meet an evil dupe in this uh, issue very briefly. Don't. Very no. exciting. No, I don't you're, like you're, it. No, you don't no. like evil dupe. I don't lo- like evil dupe. I like oh my, my dupe. goodness. I like a good dupe. dupe yeah, is one of my favorite characters. So the fact that he came up with an evil dupe makes me very. I love, uh, 100%, honestly, I love the fact that they introduce Evil Dupe in one paddle, never refer to again in a, over the course of the book, but you know that those two dupes oh, are coming together at some point and something really messed up is going to happen. It's gonna I can't be great. wait. Oh, it's going to be so wait. good. The Swamp Thing, number 11 from DC Comics, written by Rab V, art by Mike Perkins. This is the return of this from the comic book club stack podcast highly lauded book uh, following Just plug the, our podcast in the middle of the podcast i mean i don't know book. what other people think of it i assume oh they like God. it we certainly like it but the new swamp thing is missing so the new swamp things girlfriend goes to visit the old swamp things girlfriend to get her help and they track it down in the meantime the villains are building up power of their own this book is great it's good every issue i Love these weird horror riffs that they're doing. I love Mike Perkins' art. Um, it's good stuff. Pete? Uh, yeah, this is fantastic. Also, this is a great jumping on point. Um, this kind of says season two starts now. So it is a good kind of jumping on point here. If you're like, hey, I'm not, I want to get into Swamp Thing. Start with Swamp Thing number 11. Come on, join the fun. Uh, kind of a fun Grateful Dead moment where you get the skeleton with the rose bit. Uh, yeah, I love it's just this really great. And uh, yeah, I, I I think that this is kind of like a real fun and I love the tease at the end. Uh, spoiler, but uh, Jack Hawksmore is one one of my favorite characters. So I'm very excited about this. Moving on to Rose. Because it makes sense. Think about it, right? Like, totally. He's the swamp thing of the city, really. Mm -hmm. A city thing, if you will. Yeah. There you go. Rogue Son, number two from Image Comics, written by Ryan Parrott, art by Abel. Uh, This is a book about what if a dick got superpowers is essentially what it is. His father is kind of the superpower. I think he's more of a douche than a dick, but all right. Yeah, Yeah, probably a little both. The. Batman, but with superpowers of this universe, dies and leaves his powers to uh, his son, who didn't know he was his son. We find out why yeah, he like got the, the powers. Yeah, he's like the new son, not the, you know. Well, yeah, it's he's basically like the Jason Todd. Like, what if Jason Todd got the superpowers of the Batman mantle, except instead of Batman, it was sun, flame, power, something like that. Uh, this issue is giving off intense and I don't mean this in a bad way, invincible vibes here. There's like a vampire werewolf they're fighting, which feels like it could have showed up in an issue of Invincible. We've talked about a lot 
how, uh, oh my gosh, what is the book? Radiant Black that it's spun out of also has Invincible vibes. So just like getting more books like that is great with me. I love it. I love the toad here. Um, it feels like a lost Robert Kirkman book and it's a lot of fun. What'd you think, Pete? Yeah, I mean, it continues to be a very interesting idea and premise. This kind of, we started off with the old, what? The new guy gets the powers. And we're just kind of uh, seeing the story develop. Now, you know, because when people are just getting started, they have to fight like a low level tier. But this dude has to fight a werewolf vampire, which I had a hard time moving past because it was a werewolf, but then had the. The kind of like wings underneath the arm like a bat. And Your was, question is, why doesn't he have the bolts like a Frankenstein as well, no, right? Like, no, why is no. he missing that? No, that's not, has nothing to do with this. I get but you. I, I, I just you was kind of like, this is new. You don't see that often. You don't see the, you see a werewolf all the time. You see sure. a vampire a Constantly. lot. Constantly, yes. But the, the mix was such an interesting thing because it's usually separate camps. Hey, you know what I mean? They, uh... Fucked. Oh my god, I hate you so much. <laughs> Dark Ages, number six for Marvel, written by Tom Taylor, art by Ivan Coelho. This is the last issue of this book showing a post-apocalyptic Marvel universe where all the lights have gone out. This is the final battle for the fate of the world. What'd you think about this? How'd you feel about how this all wrapped up, Pete? Uh, it's the final battle. Ah, uh, man, this was insane. Insane. The use of Cyclops. Uh, Who you love. One of Wolver. your favorite characters Go kills one yourself. of your least favorite characters in this Go issue. Go fuck yourself. Um, this was, I mean, this was great. This was very enjoyable. It was really over the top, really intense. Absolutely fantastic. Great use of Sue Storm. I mean, come on. Uh, but... Man, this was a hell of a wrapping up issue. Um, if you didn't enjoy the ride, I don't know what kind of ride you're looking for, but man, this was just a, a great hell of a ride. I'll tell you what, I was surprised there wasn't more of this. I've gotten used to Tom Taylor over at DC in particular, setting up these dark post-apocalyptic worlds that just continue and continue and continue and in spiral out of control in really great ways. The fact that we had a pretty definitive ending here yeah. and that it was a positive one. I didn't mind it. It was just very surprising to me. What? That's all. Oh, okay. I was going to say, it's yeah. nice to have an ending sometimes, you know? Yeah, what I mean? it is. I was like, Oh, you know, sometimes, over. okay. Sometimes you ride a dinosaur into the sunset. What the fuck, man? You can't have that every once in a while. You're absolutely right. Jurassic world dominion coming out this summer. New Bird, number five from Image Comics, written by Chip Zdarsky, art by Jacob Phillips. In this issue, New Bird goes to jail. Our guy who solves mysteries for all the mobs heads to jail. We don't know why he's in there, but he's dealing with some bad circumstances as he does. I'll tell you what, love this issue as I always did. This is the first one, though, that I saw the twist coming from a mile away. Um, I didn't mind it. It was still well executed, but it took a little bit away from the issue for me, even though I still love this book. What about you, Pete? Oh, whatever, dude. I didn't fucking, you know, flex in a bit. Like, eh, it's not coming. I'm a smart guy. I read a lot of comics. Um, Once again, yeah. an incredible impersonation of me. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where, uh, regardless of reading ahead, uh, I think... <laughs> Artistically, oh, yeah. Sorry. Did I not mention that I was able to predict it because I read the end of the issue first? Ah, uh, OK. Yeah, that's yeah. how you did it. Um, I, yeah, I just think artistically this is fantastic. Um, it's interesting to see this character operating inside a jail. And uh, yeah, I, I was I was impressed with it. I, you know, I wasn't trying to read ahead, so I didn't wasn't like. Oh, this is what's going to happen. I was just enjoying the ride. So, uh, yeah, I I very much enjoyed this. Continues to be a hell of a book, and these, each issue is delivering. When you get on to ride a roller coaster, do you ask them, "Hey, is it going to return over here or somewhere else?" Because I always do, because I like to know the ending before I get on the thing. You know what I'm talking about? 
No, I don't, Cornell. <laughs> okay, Ithaca College. I don't know. What are we doing here? Season of the Bruja, number one from OD Press, written by Aaron Duran, art by Sailor Solar. This is a magical world where a bunch of stuff is going on. I'll tell you what, I didn't 100% have a handle on the plot of this book, but I love looking at it. What about you, Pete? Yeah, I mean, not to say it creepy like you did, but yeah, this is a beautiful book. It. The The art is fantastic. Really fun character design. Yeah, I, they do a great job of like uh, switching from like adorable and sweet to creepy and scary. Uh, the art is very impressive. It can come off a little bit like anime fun sometimes, but also... Uh, uh, very kind of over the top action as well. It's impressive. Uh, this book is weird, but in all the right ways. It's very original and creative. I'm enjoying it. Next up, Captain Marvel number 37 from Marvel, written by Kelly Thompson, art by Julius Ota. This finds the Marvel women, Captain Marvel, Binary, and Spectrum heading on a road trip all together. They invite a couple of friends along the way. And then there's a little bit of a twist in terms of what happens to Carol Danvers by the end of the issue. But this is some classic Kelly Thompson fun going on here. Uh, knows how to write these characters, knows how to write this book. I had an enjoyable time just hanging out and reading it. I agree. It's it's rare where uh, the downtimes in between stuff is enjoyable for me, but they do such a great job with these characters that I do get to kind of enjoy when they're just kind of hanging out and getting inside their head and kind of uh, hearing their thoughts about stuff. Binary, uh, I had such a, a great time with this issue. They're doing such a great job with that character. This is cool. This is um, a fun, creative, action-packed uh, comic that also gives you some great character moments. It's impressive what they're doing here. Radiant Black, number 13, from Image Comics, written by Kyle Higgins, art by Marcelo Costa. We mentioned this a little bit earlier, but this is the Mothership book for this expanding line under Radiant Black. Here we're checking in with the original Radiant Black, who is finally out of the hospital, and what's going on with him. Ultimately, he uh, hooks up with his friend, who is the current Radiant Black, who is dealing with some issues of his own, specifically a new villain who takes some of his powers from the Radiants themselves. This book is great. I, I'll tell you what, though. Like, I love this book. I love this issue more because we're focusing back on the original characters. I feel like the past couple of issues have been good but they've been turning to expand the world so rapidly that it just felt really nice to check back in with these two main characters again and see what's going on with them. It really feels like a return to basics after blowing everything out in a really big, really impressive way. Yeah. Plus it's, you know, um, you know, sometimes you got to do commercials, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, sometimes you got to kind of pay the bills. So radiant black, uh, you know, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I, I wanted pizza afterwards. I think they did it. They accomplished what they set out to do. Um, did you feel, I know you're not a New Yorker anymore. You're in Philadelphia. But as a New Yorker, when they were like, oh, man, Uncle Pete's pizza is sick, man. Was there a part, part of you that read that and were like, eh, prove it? <laughs> prove it? Yeah. Well, when I read that, I was like, they're not New York based. That's that pizza is not really good. It's a little too doughy. Probably the sauce oh. is a little too sweet. Come really? On. I mean, even after the commercial, people were still saying it was legit. So they I just don't know. they don't know, man. They don't know. They haven't been to New York. They haven't been to the big city. They haven't followed their dreams. Wow. All right. Yeah, you've got to you've got to be able to taste crush dreams in the pizza for it to be good. You're right, Alex. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Hey, uh, can I get a large pie, pepperoni, olives, crushed dreams, please? <laughs> Coming right up. <laughs> uh, I think uh, uh, Higgins knows what's up. You know what I mean? And uh, I think it's clear in this. Yeah, I agree. Higgins knows what's up. Next up, though, is the Harbinger number six from Valiant. Also, backup's great, too. 
Mm -hmm. The backup is very good. Written by Colin Kelly and Jack Jackson Lansing. Art by Robbie Rodriguez. In this issue, Peter Stanchek is coming face to face with Faith, who is returning to the book. Um, I got maybe a little confused in the first arc, to be perfectly honest with you. Like, I, I love the Harbinger characters. I love the Valiant universe. I thought it was interesting. But bringing Faith in gives this title such a grounding effect because she's such a grounded, straightforward, normal person character who just happens to have superpowers that it gave it, it focused it all up. I love seeing Faith and Peter together. I had a lot of fun reading this one. What about you, Pete? Yeah, I love when the super piowers are happening and they're piowering together. Is that what uh, I said? Yeah. Did I say yeah. super piowers? You did, and it was adorable. Thank um, you. I, um, I yeah, I I agree with you. I think that this is a great uh, use of the character that helps ground another character. Um, yeah, I I think this is you know harbinger has had a lot of kind of reiterations and I think this is an excited one to uh, read and get on board with. Hulk number five from Marvel written by Donny Cates art by Ryan Otley in this issue our Hulk is fighting a hulked out Spider-Man and in the meantime some bad things are going in on inside of his mindscape that is going to lead to a climactic change, I believe, in the next issue. Meanwhile, the Bruce Banner of another Earth is finding out what that Earth's General Ross has had planned. So lots of stuff going on in this issue. Pete, what do you think about this? Well, we had talked about uh, have, things having an invincible feel, and this um, definitely kind of reminds me of the invincible days of just punching through people and do you think ryan otley the artist of invincible is giving an invincible feel to this hulk title no that's not what i was saying at all oh okay it's just a coincidence that... you know i don't appreciate it when you put words in my mouth i was talking about the punching through people that sometimes happens in the invincible run uh, yeah, this is just oh, like... and by the way, thank you for reading that part of the script that I gave you, which put words in your mouth, but go ahead. Um, <laughs> like you could write a script for me. Anyways, uh, I think I that... like Punisher. There you go, done. <laughs> wow, did I just Wolverine say Sharp, man. Oh, that was bad. All right, anyways, yeah, this is gory and uh, intense in all the right ways. Please. Um, and, uh, yeah, I enjoy the, the rage <laughs> of it all, really just the, uh, seeing Kick there was the pants. Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah. I just think that the, the Thor panel where it was kind of like sideways and intense was really great. Um, uh, yeah, there was, it's just, uh, a giant monsters fighting each other, but it's still, uh, a ton of fun. So, Zombies yes, vs. Robots Classic, number one from Image Comics, written by Chris Ryle, art by Ashley Wood. If you are, you can probably figure this out from the title, but if you are not familiar with Zombies vs. Robots, which is sort of a seminal comic book series, you can check back in with it here. It is exactly what the title implies. Here we mostly get robots a little more than zombies, but still very fun, and Ashley Wood's art is absolutely stunning throughout. It was a fun fun time revisiting this book what did you think i mean it's worth it for the art alone i mean mm. just really unbelievable panels and ah uh, it's just so fun to kind of page through this and uh to revisit it again it's nice to have it back in our lives and uh you know i like uh the classic on the title it's like man this is classic uh robots versus zombies so yeah it was uh it was a fantastic package last but not least x, x men unlimited latitude because we're not talking about spider-man rain no nope, that's why not, it's last not but now not. we'll talk you know, about it next week well, or I guess whenever we'll justin's wait. back we'll see yeah what, what if he's not back you know what i mean what if then we'll talk about it the week afterwards that's how time progresses oh, x-men unlimited latitude number one from marvel written by jonathan hickman art by declan shalvey now i gotta ask pete we started this podcast talking about X-Men and setting it up that you haven't been the biggest fan of X-Men and in particular, Jonathan Hickman's X-Men in particular. Mm -hmm. This is a book where Wolverine falls through space, 
slices the crap out of a bunch of Abe people, rescues Nightcrawler eventually, slices the crap out Spoilers, of people, dude. drinks some beer, does a ton of Wolverine stuff. Come on. Yeah, I mean, that's why at the, uh, you know, at the, our show, I mentioned this on the, my poll list that, that I was very excited about it. This is just a ton of fun. I mean, this is great. This is finally some X-Men stuff we can get behind. Uh, yeah, I love this. I love the little moments of it as well. Uh, Wolverine bouncing around the elevator shaft. There is just... This is just a ton of fun. I mean, there was just maybe one or two wasted pages where it was like weird lines and stuff. And I was like, Hickman, come on, man. But uh, fantastic issue. Unbelievable art. Just classic Wolverine fun. They even give you the line, the best at what he does. I mean, uh, come on. I, what more do you want over here? It's funny to me to read something like this, and it really underlines the fact that I do think, and I'm, I swear I am not trying to troll you in any way, Pete, but I think Jonathan Hickman clearly knows how to write a classic X-Men book, which you can see with everything that is going on here, but... He chooses not to. He chooses to go in other directions. He chooses to push things in other directions and explore things in other ways. And ultimately, uh, here he delivers what you want. And in other places, he's delivering what other people want. So I think that's pretty great. What? what wait, 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 wait. What? What the fuck did you just say? Are you saying that, like, Hickman can write easy stuff like Wolverine where he's dumbing it down for people and like, you know, that's some No, fun. I'm saying but I'm saying he can write stuff. dumb Pete shit or smart Alex. No, I'm not that's not what I'm saying. What it I'm saying like is that saying. he is able to write things which are like just a very classic Wolverine story. When writing you say for classic, Shock. well, it makes it seem like it's oh, it's just too easy for him. Oh, like he could do this. In his it's sleep. interesting it's that you think challenge. classics were too easy and that they weren't working back in the day. Oh my god, that's that they were just like, here you go, here's a comic, here's another comic. Is that's that what, what you saying? said. That's what is you that said. what you're saying? You were like, hey, we can go. Here's the fucking <laughs> thing you want to the masses, but I would much rather do something more complicated. Well, what did you think? I mean, not to get too deep into it, but the first page of the book is a note from Jonathan Hickman where it's like, hey, you assholes, this is what you want, right? <laughs> hey, this is what you want, right? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up here. Here. <laughs> Fine. If here. I want to make two islands fuck, I'll make them fuck, okay, man? All right. All uh, right. Let me, you know, one for you, one for me. You know what I'm talking uh, about? Come on! You love Modoc. Suck on this! Yeah. Worth it for the art alone! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I mean, the listen, paneling and the art is great. It's, it's really great. Fun. And this it's is an infinite enjoyable. comic. I'm actually, once I found that out, there's a nice diet from our friend Jordan D. White in the back there where he talks Jordan about. Jordan D. White? Jordan D. White in the back wow. there where he talks about this is also online they're doing these as unlimited comics uh, this made guy. me more interested to check those out and find out what's going on there which i haven't necessarily done yet um but i thought this was really good oh yeah and, look at that the little jordy way oh. yeah and i'll tell you what ultimately i'm glad that we started this podcast with a fight about x-men and we ended it with a fight about x-men if you would like to support this podcast patreon no, it's too bad i don't like to read the giant blocks of stuff because there was a message from jordan d white in here there you go that's why all of oh, them man. Uh, oh. every single block of text in the x-men books is messages from jordan d white to you oh, pete and you just haven't been reading it. them yeah I, I miss that guy he's fun if you would like to support our podcast, patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to crowd sure on YouTube. Come hang out. We would love to chat with you about comic books. iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe, listen, and follow the show at Comic Book Live on Twitter, comicbookclublive.com for this podcast, and many more. Until next time, we'll see you at the comic book shop. Hey, Justin, come back. That was great. That was really hard.
that blows your mind.